Ever wondered how websites get their sleek design and responsive layouts? The secret is cascading style sheets, better known as CSS. This style sheet language is the magic wand that transforms the plain HTML structure of a web page into a visually appealing masterpiece. It's like the paint and wallpaper of a house, dictating the colors, fonts and layout that give a website its unique personality. By separating the structure, which is HTML, from the presentation, which is CSS, web developers can build consistent and attractive designs across their websites. But CSS isn't just about making things look good, it's a tool that helps developers control how a web page behaves across different devices and screen sizes. It's the reason why a web page looks just as good on your mobile as it does on your desktop. So, let's dive in and explore the key concepts of CSSS. First off, we have CSS selectors and declarations. The magic of CSS starts with these two fundamental concepts. Selectors, as the name suggests, select or identify the HTML elements you want to style. Think of them as the magical keys that unlock the doors to the elements on your web page. They might target all paragraphs, headings, or even a specific element with a unique ID. For instance, a selector targeting all paragraph elements would look like this. P, followed by curly braces. Everything within these braces will define the styles for the paragraph elements on your page. Now let's move on to declarations. Declarations are the actual styles you apply to your selected elements. Each declaration consists of a property and a value, separated by a colon. The property could be anything from color, font size, to background image, while the value is what you assign to that property. For example, if you want all your paragraphs to be blue, your declaration would be color blue. The combination of selectors and declarations gives us a CSS rule. A CSS rule is a powerhouse, a single line of code that can dramatically change the look and feel of your web page. Let's consider a rule for the heading one, or H1, elements. Say you want the color to be red and the font size to be 24 pixels. Your CSS rule would look like this, H1, followed by curly braces and inside these braces you would add color red and font size 24px. Remember, each declaration within a rule needs to be separated by a semicolon. That's like saying, hey, I'm done with this style, moving on to the next one. In a nutshell, CSS selectors pick out the elements you want to style, while declarations define the styles for those elements. When you bring them together, you get a CSS rule that can create stunning visual effects on your web page. As you can see, selectors and declarations form the foundation of CSS. Next up, let's talk about the CSS box model. Imagine each element on your web page as a box. This concept, known as the box model, is at the heart of CSS layout, dictating how elements stack up and interact with one another. Each box comprises four distinct parts, content, padding, border, and margin. The content is what you typically think of as the element itself, like a paragraph of text or an image. You can define its display area with the width and height properties. Next, we have padding. Padding is the space that cushions the content within the box. It sits between the border and the content. You can adjust this space using the padding property. Then we have the border, which wraps around the padding and content. It's like a fence around your element. You can adjust its thickness and style with the border property. Last but not least, we have the margin. This is the space outside the border. It's the buffer zone between this box and other elements on the page. You can think of it as personal space for your boxes. The margin property is used to control this space. Each of these parts plays a unique role in defining how elements are laid out on a page. They determine the size of the element, how much space it takes up, and how it interacts with other elements around it. For instance, if you want to increase the space around an image without resizing the image itself, you could increase the padding. If you wanted to create more distance between two paragraphs, you could increase the margin. Remember, these properties can be manipulated for each individual box or element, giving you a high level of control over your page layout. By understanding the box model and how each of its components works, we can create more complex layouts and designs. It's a fundamental concept in CSSS that forms the basis for much of the more advanced layout techniques you'll encounter later on. Understanding the box model is crucial for controlling the layout of your web pages. Moving on, let's discuss CSS layout and responsive design. One of the most powerful aspects of CSS is its ability to control the layout of a web page. 
This is where properties like display, position and float come into play. The display property, for instance, determines how an element is shown in relation to other elements. It can be in line, where elements sit in a line or block, where elements occupy the full width available, or even none, to hide an element. Position, on the other hand, decides where an element is placed on the page. It can be static, where elements follow the normal flow, or absolute, where elements are removed from the flow and positioned relative to their nearest positioned ancestor. The float property, which can be left, right, or none, allows an element to be pushed to the left or right, letting other elements wrap around it. However, in the age of varying screen sizes, from smartphones to large desktop monitors, it's not enough to have a static layout. This is where the concept of responsive design comes into the picture. Responsive design is all about making your web page look good on all devices. And how do we achieve this? With the help of media queries. Media queries are a CSS technique that enables styles to be applied based on the characteristics of the device, such as screen width. For instance, if you want to change the font size of your web page when viewed on a device with a maximum width of 600 pixels, you can use a media query to define this. So by using a combination of layout properties and media queries, you can create a layout that adapts to different screen sizes, orientations and resolutions. This way, regardless of the device your audience is using, your web page will always look its best. To sum it up, CSS gives you the tools to control the layout of your web page and to make it responsive. It's like being the director of your own digital stage, deciding where each element should go and how it should behave. With these tools, you can create flexible and responsive web designs. Now, let's delve into some advanced CSS concepts. First off, we have CSS preprocessors like SAS and LESS. These tools extend the capabilities of CSS, introducing features such as variables, nesting and functions. Variables allow you to store and reuse values throughout your style sheets, while nesting enables you to write more organized and readable code. Functions, on the other hand, can be used to perform specific tasks, such as calculating the color shade or generating content. All these features not only make your code more efficient, but also easier to maintain. Next, let's talk about CSS frameworks and libraries. These are collections of pre-built styles and components that can streamline your web development process. Frameworks like Bootstrap and Foundation offer a wide variety of components, from navigation bars and buttons to forms and models. They also come with a grid system that helps you create responsive layouts with ease. Libraries like Animate CCS or Hover CCS provide a set of ready-to-use animations and effects that can be applied to your elements with just a class name. These tools can save you time and effort and also help ensure consistency across your projects. Finally, we come to CSS animations and transitions. CSS animations allow you to create complex multi-step animations that can be controlled with keyframes. This means you can specify the start and end states of the animation, as well as any intermediate steps. Transitions, on the other hand, are used to animate the change of a CSS property from one state to another over a certain period. They can add a smooth, professional touch to your website, enhancing the user experience. Remember, while these concepts might seem daunting at first, with practice and patience, they can become powerful tools in your web development arsenal. So don't be afraid to experiment and explore. These advanced concepts can greatly enhance your web development skills. So, there you have it, the key concepts of CSS. We've navigated through the colorful world of selectors and declarations, the building blocks of any CSS styling. We've delved into the box model, the foundation of layout design, and explored the vast landscape of layout and responsive design, essential for ensuring your website shines on any device. We've also dipped our toes in the advanced waters of CSS, understanding the power of preprocessors like SAS and LESS, which offer us extended capabilities like variables, nesting, and functions. We've seen how frameworks and libraries such as Bootstrap and Foundation can streamline our web development process. And let's not forget the magic of CSS animations and transitions, bringing our web pages to life. With a good understanding of CSS, you're well on your way to creating stunning and responsive web designs.